I am Lisa from Poster My Wall, and this is Learn with Poster My Wall. Today, we are so excited to have Monica Farber, our favorite photo and video expert, back with us. And she's going to teach you today how to shoot high quality photos and videos of your phone on, or I'm sorry, off of your business on a budget, which means on your smartphone. So we all do need photo and video content for our websites, social media feeds and other marketing, right? Because video just gets so much more attention. But we also know that professional photography and videography can be um, cost prohibitive, we'll say, to be nice or super expensive if we're being totally honest. So what if you could create your own high quality videos and photos yourself entirely on your phone? That would be awesome, right? And that's what Monica is gonna show you how to do. She's gonna show you four different types of shots today. And she's going to also give you tips on how to do them as far as, as lighting and where to, how to set up the camera and camera settings and all of that. And our goal for today is that you will leave with tips and settings and processes that are, you can use right away to elevate the quality of your own photography and videography. And we are also gonna have some bonus content at the end. Monica has summarized everything that she's gonna teach you today into a guide that you can download and keep with you and use as you, you, know, as you go on and, are, and making your own photos and videos. Uh, today's class is gonna be discussion style. So this is your opportunity to ask Monica anything you need to know. Um, if the, those comments, of course, go in the, in the comments in the chat and Audrey is watching the chat and she will, she will relay your comments to Monica. And if you stay till the end, yes, we have that bono, bonus content and also a promo code. So please do stay till the end today. So welcome, Monica. I'm gonna unshare my screen and you can tell us what you're gonna be doing today. All right, thank you so much, Lisa. And thank you everyone for joining me today. So as she just said, we're gonna basically break this up into four different categories. Um, we're gonna be shooting people, we're gonna sh be shooting spaces, we're gonna be talking about different ways that you can shoot spaces, capturing the ambiance, um, styling products, styling food. Um, and as far as people, we're gonna be talking about talking head videos and documentary videos. Uh, it's really funny whenever I started thinking about what kind of videos I could create to kind of demonstrate to you guys. Um, obviously, I want people to come to me so that I can shoot professional quality photos and videos with like DSLR cameras. But honestly, I use my phone for a ton of the content that I make for social media clients, because whenever you're posting content that disappears in 24 hours, sometimes you don't have time for all of that. So I just use my, um, my new iPhone and I use this, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit create the content on the fly, and most people don't know the difference. <laughs> okay, great, Monica. So let's start with talking head video. What exactly is that? Sure. So a talking head video is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a video. Of, so what you guys see right here, if this were pre-recorded, which is being recorded and you're watching it later, this is a talking head. So it's a, it's a video that looks like an interview or me just speaking to you, and all you see is my head in the video, either looking directly at the camera or looking off the camera at the interviewer. Okay, and so how do, how do you go about setting that up? I'm glad you asked. I have a little video for you guys right here. So here we're gonna shoot video that is like an interview or talking head style. We're gonna shoot some video here with Mr. West. And the first thing that you need to do is make sure you have a tripod. Um, this is about $105. I got it on Amazon. This is going to be linked in the cheat sheet. And this will take care of your light and the tripod. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Another important point is to make sure that you're using the rear facing camera, not the front facing camera. It's easy to set it up like this so he can see himself, but this camera is nowhere near as good as this one. So we're going to set it up like this. And then set it on video. Okay, so another very important thing you need to pay attention to other than steadying the camera is the light. So there's two different ways that you can do this. Um, you could use a ring light like I have here. Or, 
place your subject by a window. He's either going to be directly, here, let's open this, window or a door. So see all this natural light coming in? Mario could either be facing the outdoors and the light would be coming in directly at his face, or he could be next to a window or a light source where the light is coming in from the side. This is going to give it more dramatic look where the light's on one side of his face, it's then a little bit darker on the other side. Completely up to you, but never have the light source behind him. So whether it's natural light coming in from the side or the front, or it's a ring light, that's how you want to light your subject. So now we're going to talk about audio. If you're in a quiet area, sometimes the audio, uh, the microphone in your camera is going to work just fine. But in a busy restaurant or gym or salon, you're going to need an external mic, which you can get for about $100. I'll link that in the cheat sheet as well. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like with just using the phone's microphone. Go ahead, Mario. Hi, my name is Mario West. I'm the CEO and founder of the Mario West Foundation. Perfect. Now let's mic him up and see if that makes a difference. Okay, now I've attached a wireless lav mark mic to Mario's shirt right there, which I'm also going to link in the cheat sheet. You can get this from B&H for about $140, and it will plug directly into your cell phone, where um, it'll replace the audio with much clearer audio that removes a lot of background noise. So, Mario, go ahead. Let's see if we can hear a difference. Hi, my name is Mario West. I'm the CEO and founder of the Mario West Foundation. Hi, my name is Mario West. Hi, my name is Mario West. I'm the CEO. Okay, we could go in depth about interviews all day, but simply if you just pay attention to three things, the quality of your videos will go through the roof. Pay attention to audio, lighting, and stabilizing your camera, whether that be with a handheld gimbal or with a tripod. Since I didn't record Mario saying anything more than an introduction, here's the video I shot to promote this class using exactly the tips I've just demonstrated. In this class, you'll learn how to shoot really great content for your business using nothing more than your phone. We're gonna talk about camera angles, we're gonna talk about settings, lighting, and ideas for fun shots. I've even included a free PDF download with all of my tips. All you have to do is click the link below to watch the replay. Thanks so much, and let me know if you have any questions. Awesome, Monica. So, so when you shoot headshots, um, like how, how far away do you like to stand from your subject? How, how, how much of them do you want to fill the frame and how much space around them? Right, so I would say maybe about five feet. I usually do it about like this, unless there's a reason to have their full body in there. So maybe if they're, so my, uh, Mario's a basketball player. If we were doing this um, like on the court, I'd probably show full body. So it's up to, to whatever you, it is that you're talking about. Let's move on to what if you need people images of people but they're it's not an interview more to tell a story or to give a sense of you know what they're doing an activity right so obviously so what i did there was just show you guys how i frame up the talking head video but based on that video you have no idea what the story was about um so what i'm going to do here is show you guys a documentary style video so i shot this really quick video i think it's about 30 seconds long the final cut product is about 30 seconds long, which could be used for an Instagram reel. Um, and what it does, it's about people in this gym. It's a local CrossFit gym here. And I just wanted to tell the story about the people who work out there. So let me go ahead and play this for you. I will say real quick that after I shot this, I realized it was so loud in there because I didn't have the lapel mic. So what I did is I recorded a voiceover on top, which is why you can tell it's not synced up. But You'll be able to hear it. Okay, now we're going to shoot people, but documentary style. Whenever you shoot content like this, you really need to tell a story about the people in the space that they're in. Okay, we're going to start with three different shots you need to make sure to get, whether you're capturing photos or video. This is how I create all of my stories for Instagram and content for clients. First, you need to get a wide shot. Wide meaning far back. It's like an establishing shot. So I'm going to turn on my camera, stand back, and get a wide shot of the entire scene. Now if you're taking a photo and you need it to be a little bit brighter, what you're going to do is tap the screen right where your subject is, and then when this sun icon comes up, you're going to drag the sun icon up to make it brighter or down to make it darker. 
Next, we're gonna get a medium shot. Rather than getting the entire space like we just did, we're gonna get a little bit more up close. I'm gonna show her full body and what exercise move she's doing. So as you can see here, I'm getting down on her level to shoot this. It's really important whenever you're shooting either photos or video to make sure you're doing it from different angles, different heights, um, different points of view. Here I'm shooting with cinematic mode in my iPhone's camera. Next, we're gonna make sure to include lots of details. Since this is a story about the gym and the people working out there, I'm gonna make sure to include lots of close-ups of the equipment that they use. So when you shoot this, make sure to not be all over the place. That's gonna make your viewer dizzy. You wanna move very slowly from left to right and up and down, slow, smooth movements. Another thing, this is gonna be a lot more smooth if you're using a handheld gimbal. I'm gonna link that in the cheat sheet. You don't see me holding it here because I'm letting my cameraman use it. Also make sure to get a fun flat lay or a top down, basically where you're hovering your camera right above the surface. As you can see, it's pretty dark here in the corner, but I brought an external light. I'll link this also in the cheat sheet. You, if you have an assistant with you, they can hold the light for you, or you can just hold it in one hand and hold your phone in the other. If you hold this light directly above the subject, it's gonna light it evenly. Now, if you pull it over to the left or the right side, it's gonna create these strong contrasting shadows and look a lot more dramatic. It's completely up to you. Play around with it and see what you like best. Speaking of light, natural light is your best friend. So what we did here was open the garage doors to the back of the gym, and I have the coach here swinging the kettlebell facing the sunlight. So. If I were standing where my cameraman is now, all you would see is a silhouette because he's lit from the back. So I'm walking outside and I'm gonna shoot directly where the sun is hitting him. Okay, now specific to those shooting video, let's do two new shots, a time-lapse and a slow motion. These features are already built into your iPhone. Just open your camera and they'll be at the bottom. And what you also need to make this look really smooth is a tripod. You can either purchase a tripod or use the one that came with your ring light. I don't need the ring light in this situation, but I'm going to use that stand anyway. All right, now we're gonna do a time lapse. So I set the camera up again on the tripod right by the row machine, and we're just gonna tap on time lapse and let it roll for a few minutes. Okay, now let's watch the reel that I just shot with you. This was done completely in the iPhone. You don't need any fancy editing apps. You don't need to know color correction, transitions, anything. All you need is your phone. And then you can cut this up later and use it for stories, posts, and so much more. And of course, here are some of the stills we shot. Monica, do you usually shoot stills and video at the same time? Ooh, good question. Um, I usually go in with a plan to do one or the other, but I mean, you can definitely do it. I try to plan out my shots before I showed up. When I went to this gym, I knew I was gonna try to get the wide, medium, up close. I wanted to make sure to show you guys slow-mo this. So I kind of jot it down on a notebook a piece of notebook paper and stick it in my pocket that way I don't leave and then be like man it would have been cool to get that shot or this shot so I go in with a mission but yeah you can especially with an iPhone you can just toggle back and forth 
Okay, and I want to point out that the, uh, the, the assembly video is something you can actually use Poster My Wall to make, and I will show you a sample of that towards the end. Um, and also I want to point out that adding stock audio makes a huge difference to the quality of your videos, and, and, and it sets the mood. Absolutely. Um, yeah, in addition to stock audio, like the music, sound effects, sound effects is really cool, especially like if that video had been shot in a kitchen and I were frying bacon, I would try to throw in some like bacon sizzles or like a cracking of an egg or something like that. It really adds a lot to it. Ooh, awesome idea. All right. So many of our viewers need to take shots of their product. How do you shoot that? Cool. Okay. So product shots. I shot a video here showing you guys. I just went to Publix and picked up a couple slices of strawberry cake and shot it. And actually this video or this, I'm sorry, this still image is on my website, along with a whole bunch of images that were made with a huge production, multiple cameras, and you really can't tell the difference. Uh, let me play the video and then I'm going to show you guys the background I used. Okay, we're going to shoot some food with our phones. I am going to use the strawberry cake as an example. This is the second time we're shooting this video, so half of this is already gone. So the very first tip for shooting food with your phone is to, and this goes for cameras too, shoot near a window. You want that natural light coming in. So I always put the food right by a window so that light source is coming in from the side. In this instance, I'm gonna use one of these replica surfaces. You don't have to use a surface like this. I mean, maybe you have um, a nicer table or whatever it may be, that's perfectly fine. But I wanna be able to use these photos for something else after, so. Number two, props. I never shoot just the food. Um, depending on how beautiful the food is, you certainly can do that, but I like to style it a little bit with props. So for this example, I'm actually gonna use two pieces of cake. So it looks like maybe a couple of people are enjoying dessert. And then I will bring in um, probably some ingredients that are used in that dish. So since this is strawberry cake, I'm gonna add some fresh strawberries. You don't have to be too precise with it. I've already cleaned these and actually went through and picked out the prettiest ones of the batch. But I'll add a few. I like to work in odd numbers, so I'll add like three. And then I'll just kind of throw some around. This one's too big. And once I start framing it up. Maybe I'll move them, but that looks good for now. Silverware, flatware, I always like to add this if it's a plated dish. Um, so there's that. It just adds interest to the photo. And then drinks. You don't have to add drinks. I just like the shape of these little round ones kind of replicate that shape of the dishes. And it's espresso, it goes well with dessert. Like I said, it's not necessary, but I think this already looks better than if it were just a piece of cake. All right, next, clean your set. Especially because this is iPhone photography and not shot on a DSLR, we're not gonna be spending any time in Photoshop. There's a million editing apps out there and I will use something like um, Lightroom Mobile or maybe like Color Story or Teza app, but I don't want to be spending any time having to clean like smeared icing or spilt coffee. See, there's already cherry juice here on the sur or um, strawberry juice here on the surface. So I just make sure that I clean up anything that I'm gonna not like later. There's this espresso in here. All right, now let's shoot it. All right, so there's three different angles that you can shoot this or that I would shoot this. Directly overhead at a 45 degree angle or straight on. But if you're shooting straight on, you wanna make sure that whatever is behind the scene is worth being in the photo. Right now, I, I don't wanna have any of that in here. Plus this looks really nice from above. I think a lot of phone photography just looks better from above, kind of like a flat lay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot it directly above and I'm gonna use these grid lines to try to line it up with the rule of thirds. What that means is I'm gonna take my subject, which right now I'm 
counting my subject as this bottom right slice of cake. And I'm going to line that up where those two grid lines intersect right there. So once I have that lined up, then I'm going to look at these crosshairs. There's a white and a yellow crosshair. Once those intersect, once, once those line up, then I know my phone is uh, level. So my phone is level. That slice of cake is right there in those crosshairs in the bottom right lower third. I'm going to tap on that to get it in focus, and I'm going to hold that down to lock focus. <laughs> there we go. Now, at this point, I can either bring the exposure up or bring the exposure down, depending on what I'm looking for or what I need. See how that gets so much brighter? Looks good right there. Snap. I'm going to move this down here. And that's it. You can post it on Instagram and no one's going to know you shot it with your phone. So Monica, I mean, cake, everybody, well, almost everybody likes cake. <laughs> what if you have, what if you have a product that's not so pretty, like a piece of hardware, how would you shoot that? Good question. So let's say that you are shooting a hammer. So maybe some of you guys or like own a, a garage or um, a hardware store and you want to shoot a flat like, oh, by the way, this is this is that board. It's so lightweight and so small. And yet it looked like I shot it on a marble table. This could be used for so many things. Um, but back to the hammer, I would shoot it with supporting props like I did the strawberries and the cake. I would probably shoot it with a handful of nails or some other tools that you sold. Um, but I also wouldn't focus so much on styled product or um, photography flat lay like this. I would focus probably more on video. I would shoot, um, you know, actually hammering the nail. Um, I'd probably be filming a bunch of tips for how to repair a wooden fence, how to build a tree house, how to build a dog house, how to fix a, uh, um, a creaky deck or something like that. And then people are not only saying, oh, this is a really great quality hammer, but oh, now I know how to fix that fence out back without having to hire someone. And then they start to know, like, and trust you. So then they're going to want to spend their money with you instead of Home Depot, because they're coming back again and again, because of your really great content, which by the way, you want to make look good and clear so they can, you know, understand it, see it, see it clearly. Okay. Now, what if your product is a service, if you're an accountant or, um, you know, do a, a tax service, something like that, where you don't have something to sh shoot? Okay. Um, a tax service. So what I would do with a tax service is focus on the people. You're not going to take a photo of tax papers. <laughs> I don't even know what that would look like. So I'd focus on the people in the business. I would probably... Um, go to some longtime customers and say, hey, would you mind doing a testimonial for me? Shoot a video testimonial. Um, some people don't feel comfortable behind the camera. So you could just get like a quick blurb from them and you could go into post from my wall and create a really nice um, quote Instagram uh, graphic using that. Um, I would shoot still photos and videos of um, your team and yourself showing who you are. Uh, maybe let's say maybe your team has like a Monday morning meeting every week at a coffee shop, take some photos like behind the scenes and be like, you know, oh, this is, you know, our senior accountant, Lisa, she loves almond milk lattes. Hey, Lisa, say hi to everyone. And then people get to know the person behind the business and people like spending their money a with small businesses, but they also like spending their money with those whose values align with their own, which is a lot more than you're going to learn from something like H&R Block. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Now, our, for our fourth type of shot, we wanted to know, you know, some people need to shoot their the environment that they work in, their place of business. So how do you, what's the best way to shoot that? All right. So for capturing the ambiance, um, I have a friend who owns a blow dry bar here in Atlanta. And so I dropped in and said, can I just get some quick shots of this? And I think, you know, oftentimes what people would think to do 
is get the before and after shots. A lot of times salons have ring lights in their studios now. And you can look online all day and be like, okay, that's a nice haircut. That's a nice color. Or you can say, oh, that looks like nice haircut and color. Also a really beautiful experience. Like I can go there and relax and I'm going to have a great time. So you want to make sure and capture all those sorts of things. So here is a little clip I've created. Again, this has a voiceover during whenever they had the hair dryer on, so you can hear me a little better. Okay, so the next type of shot that we're going to talk about is ambiance shots. And the, the example we're going to use here is a hair salon. So if you own a hair salon or really any other service type business, what you can do is shoot ambiance shots rather than just, for example, shots of a person getting their hair done. There's so much more to it that can really tell the story of your business. So come with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is shoot a time lapse using the time lapse feature on the iPhone. So I have the phone set up over here on the ring light tripod. I'm going to tap on time lapse and let it roll for a few minutes. Also try shooting some content with the slow mo feature in the phone's camera. Okay, next, make sure to not ignore the details throughout your store. So that whether that be the makeup brushes, the products that are sold up front, um, just any sort of details about how the place is designed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get little up close shots of all of these details, and then I can use these clips separately for Instagram posts, reels, um, Facebook posts, TikToks, um, even in newsletters. Try to make very slow, steady movements panning from left to right, moving top to down, slowly using in home? and out. Just very slight, slow movements. Try not to go too quickly. Also, don't forget to film some top-down shots where you're holding your camera directly parallel to the ground or to a tabletop. For this, you don't even need the gimbal. You could hold it steady and just get either a still shot or some action that's going on below like I'm doing here with the book. Okay, another important piece to remember is to share the story of the place, the kind of experience that the customer is going to have. Of course, they're going to come here and get their hair done, but you want to show the people and how friendly they are and what a great, fun experience it's going to be as a whole. So follow me and I'll show you how I do that. The gimbal really comes in handy for shots like this when you're walking. If you didn't have this, you would be able to see lots of movement. It would be jumpy. You could even tell when I was breathing. Let's see all those clips put together. This is with absolutely no extra editing programs, no color correction, no transitions. You can literally do this right in Instagram. Thank you. Right now, I'm going to quickly share my screen and show you. This was put together in Poster My Wall, and this is using the video, the, the video slideshow and photo slideshow and also text slideshow. And this is going to show you what you can put together in Poster My Wall. So the bonus content, Audrey's going to put the link in to the comments, but you can see 
Here is the where if you click to get the complete guide of everything that Monica shared with you today. And if you'd like to contact Monica, we've got her information. And then we have templates. Um, if you want to see what the slideshow one looks like, that is a square one. And here's a couple with slideshows. So you can do that and you can like just swap out your own photos or your own stock photos choices and have a slideshow or a, a video ready to go on Instagram. Um, same for a couple of these and a couple of the uh, vertical ones and other marketing classes that you might like. And if you want to learn to use the slideshow feature and poster my wall, go for the one in yellow, wow your audience with photo and video slideshows. Okay, then down to today's offer. You can save 30% off of a new poster my wall subscription with the code budget 30. This is good for any new customer getting their first subscription or upgrading from pay as you go to premium or premium to premium plus. This expires March 3rd. Um, so please do use the code right away if you're planning to use it. Uh, Audrey is putting that in the comments too. So we're gonna take a week off and then we're gonna be back with Morgan Myers of Life Marketing. Morgan is gonna walk us through Facebook ads for beginners. She's gonna talk about how to assess if Facebook ads are right for your business and share some case studies of successful small business Facebook ad campaigns. So if you'd like to learn about Facebook ads, join us on Wednesday, March 9th at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Awesome, so that is it for today. Thank you again, Monica. Thank you, Audrey and Rimshaw. And thank everybody for joining us. Have a great day and hope to see you back with the next Poster My Wall class. Thank you.